And actually, when I first started my nursing career over 12 years ago, I found that um, I kept finding these opportunities just by coincidence. I kept coming across people that kept saying things to me like, Liam, hey, you'd be a great director of nursing one day. And I started to play with the idea and the possibility. I was like, maybe I could do that. And I had absolutely no clue where I was going to be going with my career and what I was supposed to be doing. And I'm sure some of you might resonate with that. Please do let me know in the chat. Otherwise, I feel like I'm speaking to no one. I love that. Yes, let's do it. All righty. So I started out my career Back in the day in Scotland, I studied out in medical admissions and planning. And that's where I was told you could be a director of nursing one day. And so be it. That was my career plan. That was my career path. I just decided that's where I was going to hit. And through this journey, as you can see here from the amalgamation of terrible selfies, that I have gathered lots of different unique experiences. And I think this is true for most of us. Um, I went from MAPU to intensive care, I then moved to Australia, the beautiful land of Australia, and became a citizen, and I started working in Sydney, and I did lots of different things. I think one common theme that I've noticed throughout this path is that I never really had a plan. <laughs> I never really knew what I was going to do next, um, and I think most of us can resonate with that. I went from ICU to teaching, I taught advanced life support campus training, I became a CNE across medicine, I was a CNC in medicine, and then I went to primary healthcare. I worked for the University of Canberra alongside people like Kasha, I did some academic work, clinical facilitation work, and I kept asking myself, what am I doing, where am I going, what is my plan? And other people kept saying to me, hey Liam, <laughs> you should have a plan, you should be working towards something. And um, fast forward that, I then took a job at the University of Canberra Hospital, and I took a job as a geriatric rehab CNC on the Majura Ward, which I absolutely loved doing. Um, and people kept saying to me, you're from ICU, what are you doing here? <laughs> Why are you working in ger geriatrics? Um, and I believed that it was the collection of my unique experiences that led me there. I also uh, worked internationally. I worked in Fiji. I did an internship there whilst I was studying my Master's of International Public Health and Master's of Health Leadership and Management. And I worked for uh, with the WHO and the UN. So I share all of this to amalgamate and show you that there are so many options within our nursing careers. And I'm sure you have your own version of this story too. If you were to put it all on a page, what would it look like? How would it present itself? Today, I don't work clinically. Today, I find what I love to do, which is inspiring nurses within their career. I'm the proud host of High Performance Nursing Podcast. We've had 55,000 downloads across the globe in the short year that we've been live. Um, and I help nurses navigate their careers. And it's super fun and exciting because there's so much scope for us here. I'm seeing lots of amazing things in the chat. Thank you so much for putting it in there. But who believes that your career should be like this? Everybody kept saying, hey, Liam, it's got to be linear. Like, it's just step by step. Just be the CN, then the CNE, then the CNC, then the NAM, then the ADON, then the DON. Then you might do a lecturing job. Then you might do X, Y, and Z. But in reality, this is what it looked like. It kind of looked a bit of a hot mess. Looked like an ED nurse's IV infusion line set, right? <laughs> it was a total, complete amalgamation and mess. So I kept being told, stick to a role, stop job hopping, get clear, plan, and if you don't, you're going to ruin your career. And I'm sure some of you might have heard some of these stories in your career. Now, this is the part where most people don't really stop and think and consider. And this is what was happening for me. I was having all of these thoughts. I don't fit in. I don't know that I'm good enough. I can't stick in anything. I don't have the skills. I don't know what I like. And everybody around me seemed to look like they had it all worked out. And I didn't. And I'm sure, hopefully, somebody can resonate with that in the chat. I'm getting some nods uh, in agreement. And I was feeling all of the feelings, right? Confusion, excited, overwhelmed. I was driven. Like I was inspired to take these new jobs, but I was also feeling like super lost. I was feeling a bit of shame about moving and leaving and changing all the time. And it was all a little bit unclear. And I kept coming up against this as I moved through my career. I did a lot of personal development work. I did a lot of coaching. And I had a little pivotal moment where I read this book, Big Magic, um, by Liz Gilbert. If you haven't read it, it's an incredible read for uh, creatives out there. And she, come, she came up with this idea, this very simplistic approach to the world of work. And in, in its simplicity, she talks about being a jackhammer or a hummingbird. And it is a brilliant book, uh, Yolan, for sure. And she talks about being jackhammer or a hummingbird. And I want to pose this to you today. So jackhammers are people who just know from the minute that they draw breath that they are on the right path. They just know what they're doing. And I'm curious to know if any of you are a jackhammer in the comments, let me know. They just keep digging deep. They just keep excavating and finding new data, new information, and they just become the specialists of the world, right? They have challenges and obstacles, but they just know what they want to be doing and they work towards them. 
And then there's the flip side, which is the hummingbirds, which I deeply resonate with, and I'm sure some of you will too. The hummingbirds of the world are the people that are the cross pollinators, the cross fertilizers. They are the beautiful humans who fly from flower to flower, collect the nectar or hospital to hospital or facility to facility. They collect all the skills, knowledge, wisdom and experience, and then they take it to the next place and they cross pollinate. And when I saw this, I was like, I felt a relief, an instant relief of like, maybe it's all right to be a cross pollinating clinician. Maybe we need to make that a term. So I'd love to know in the chat what resonates with you. What comes up? What are you thinking when I talk about being a jackhammer or hummingbird? Does it resonate with you? So the lesson that I learned was that I was outsourcing a lot of career decisions to other people. And I see this a lot in the work that I do, right? We ask other people what we should be doing with our lives instead of tuning into what it is that we actually want to be doing. I was doing what I call shooting myself. I should do this. I should do a PhD. I should pursue this path. And the reality is you don't have to do anything. You get to decide, right? It was impacting my health and well-being. I was burnt out and I kept beating myself up because of lack of compliance with that plan that I set back at the start that was no longer serving me. So I thought about, let's think about career planning in a different way. Let's think about maybe it's okay to be a multi-passionate cross-pollinating clinician, because I think that's truly what all of us are, right? And I want to put that on my CV almost. Maybe it's about getting comfortable being uncomfortable, right? And really leaning into being self-aware and tuning into what it is that truly lights us up. And I love this idea of a care plan for our career. Our care plans for our patients and our clients are not set in stone. And then they're not rigid in nature. They are flexible, adaptable, and holistic. And they look at the whole picture. Why don't we offer that to ourselves within our careers? You might already have it. Some of you might not. So I created this 4P approach. And in its simplicity, it's four simple steps. Perceptions, passions, pathways, and permission to plan. So step one is, what are your thoughts and beliefs that you have about what is possible for you? We all have lots of subconscious thoughts every day, about 60,000 of them, in fact. And those thoughts dictate the results that we create in our life, unless we unearth them and see them for what they are, just sentences in our brain. So I do a lot of work with nurses in looking at what are we telling ourselves? Is it factually true? And is it serving us moving forward? Step two is passions. Are you tuning into what truly lights you up in your career? Have you, did you do what I did, just took pathways because somebody told you to? Or are you tuning into your body? How do you feel when you're doing the work? Pay attention to what really lights you up. Do you love the data? Do you love the gerontology work? Do you like the clinical work? Maybe you like the education. Really tuning into that is so, so key. And then step three is pathways, exploring all of the possibilities, but exploring them with no pressure to take action. So many of us think, oh, I could do that. And then we start mapping out the how instead of just allowing ourselves to just dream, to just play, to just think, and then work out the how as we move towards the goal. And then step four is permission to plan. Gathering all of the information, giving yourself permission and creating a career care plan. Now tell me how I'm going for time. I'm nearly done. <laughs> I feel like I'm roller coaster riding through this, but I've seen lots of amazing things in here about being a hummingbird and a jackhammer. And I think it's beautiful to be both uh, for sure. So I want to give you a bit of a case study of an incredible nurse that I worked with in gerontology and uh, tell her story. And hopefully uh, you see yourself in this and you take something away from this using the four Ps. So I'd love you to meet Jane. Jane went from RN to RN2. She had 30 years of overseas, incredible cross-pollinating experience that she brought to us in Australia. She was a subacute rehab nurse since 2017 in gerontology in UCH. Her name is not actually Jane, by the way, to protect her identity. Uh, and she had a desire to progress to a level two RN position. She wanted to become a CN, a specialist. She wanted to promote herself within this career. And she kept coming up against roadblocks. She applied multiple times and she did not make it happen. So whilst working with her as a nurse unit manager, I really saw her desire to progress. So we went through the 4P approach. Number one, step number one, her perceptions. These are some of the things that she was telling herself. And sometimes these thoughts just come up, right? And we've just practiced believing them over time. Who's told themselves, I don't have enough experience to apply. I'm not the best team leader, potentially. I don't have the postcard yet. I'm not ready. She has 30 years experience. When will you be ready? If 30 years is not enough, when will you be ready? So a few things to note here. 
was that she was doing what I call possibility blocking herself, right? We all do this. Our brain wants to keep us safe. So it's busy collecting all of this evidence to suggest all of the reasons why you shouldn't do something without looking at the reasons why you should. She was leaning into believing that she was lacking and she underestimated her capability and her capacity. And this is 100% normal. It's 100% human, but it's also worth noting that it's 100% optional. And this is where most of us forget, right? Like we have autonomy and power here. We have full choice over what we tell ourselves cognitively. So the first thing that we did was looked at what she was telling herself and how that was stopping her from moving forward. Step two, passions. Look at all of the incredible things she was really good at. When we looked at what she thrived in, what she felt really good at doing, great team leader, she got great feedback, she loved delegating, she was a specialist with all of this 30 years of experience, she was hungry for new evidence, she was passionate about hand hygiene, right? So as we started exploring what she was passionate about and how she felt when she was doing the work of being a leader, she loved it and she could really tune into that. So she started gathering ideas, she identified her strengths, she identified what lit her up. And she started convincing herself, we do need to build belief and convince ourselves that we can do something in moving forward. Step three, pathways. There are so many different pathways in nursing. And the reason why I didn't talk about it today is because when I Googled how many pathways there are in aged care, I've got 181 million results <laughs> on a Google search. Now, there's probably not that many pathways, but there is so many different things that we could do. So what we did in Pathways was we just allowed her to explore cognitively without needing to take action. So she saw that she could do all of these different roles. It was possible for her to apply and to move forward. So she allowed herself to quote unquote, cognitively play with possibility. She removed focusing on the how, and she gathered all of the proof that all of the paths were in fact uh, possible. And this is where most of us start career planning. We look at what is available and we start from here instead of thinking and feeling and tuning into the human experience whilst being a nurse. I'm a big passionate believer in, um, yeah, for sure, Yolan, yeah. And, and men, like, uh, trust me, imposter syndrome today, I'm feeling all of it, <laughs> for real, in, in this room, for sure. I think that it's worth noting that imposter syndrome is such a big part of this process. And that's why when we don't acknowledge the thoughts and feelings that we're having, we stop ourselves and we block ourselves from doing amazing things in this world. So we gave uh, this Jane, amazing Jane, permission to plan. She practiced believing new thoughts, right? Because for years she's believed those thoughts that weren't serving her. And now she's consciously, intentionally telling herself, maybe I am good enough. Maybe I can do this, right? That's totally available to you too. She built belief over time and questioned whether or not her pathway was the right one for her but she reclaimed all her power following the 4P process. And of course, she landed the job. <laughs> Good news. But what I want you to acknowledge here is that not only was it about landing the job, and um, I think it's, I'm sorry, Victoria mentioned this at the start, about um, inspiring possibility. She created so many strategic byproducts by really tuning in to her thoughts, her feelings, and making this happen and pursuing her path for other people. There are so many strategic byproducts when we explore what is possible for ourselves and tap into our unplanned capacity. Imagine if she had not applied. Imagine if she hadn't proven to herself. How would the gerontology aged care space at UCH be different? So as we wrap up, I want you to think of these questions or think about this. Is this in a modern, modern nursing career planning approach or is this just what we've always been doing and we haven't talked about it? Maybe that's what is true. What if career planning isn't so much about knowing the how? We get caught up on the how or having a clear defined step-by-step -step plan, but instead inviting all of the discomfort in the human experience. I'm willing to feel imposter syndrome if it gets me closer to my goal. I'm willing to feel fear if it allows me to move forward and change the trajectory of aged care and gerontology nursing, um, and knowing and pursuing our paths from a place of self-awareness, self-inquiry, having your own back. Because I know from my experience and having done this over 400 times with nurses across the country, that it's our thoughts and our feelings that typically stop us from moving forward and achieving what is truly possible for us within our careers. So I flew through that, but I wanna be respectful of time. Um, and I know I can speak at a million miles an hour. I would love one insight that you're taking away from today's session. Just one simple thing that you are taking away from today's session that you can go and apply to your career planning. I'm seeing lots of great stuff in the chat. Thank you for engaging with me. If I had more time, I would engage back and forth, but I don't want to take up time from your precious uh, communities of um, practice. Play with the possibility. I love that. So in conclusion, career planning is not linear. This is what we expect. This is the reality. 
Career plans are flexible and adaptable. Imagine if we set rigid care plans for our patients. What would their outcomes look like? Your career should be exactly the same. Invite it all in. And I love this last one. The best career path plan is the path you create intentionally. It's not the path you get from a random Facebook group <laughs> where people tell you what to do. It's the path that you create. You know what you want to be doing. Lean into that power. All righty. I have been Liam Caswell. Thank you so much for your time. If you want to connect with me, I'm at High Performance Nursing and I have the podcast High Performance Nursing. We've had over 100 episodes. And Jed, actually, who's here, is coming on the podcast uh, this month. So actually tomorrow. So there you go. Um, come and listen to that. We're talking all things HK. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Now, Liam, do you, do you have time to stay for a couple of quick questions if anyone's got anything they'd like to ask you? Yeah, I would love that. I love questions, please. Okay. That was just fantastic. Thank you, Liam. While other people are gathering themselves, I'll jump in. What are the kinds of things that you see when people come to you? What are the, the main things that they they seek your advice on or, or that they have the most, I guess, growth in? Yeah, honestly, um, nine times out of 10, every, people know what they want to be doing. It's all about permission. That's why the last step is permission, because we've got to just kind of like excavate in our brain and like really tune into like, what is it? What could be possible for you? Let's just play with the possibility. And then when we do that, they actually see that they're doing the things that actually they want to be doing. And it's always, always, always about um, permission and giving themselves permission. And sometimes they just steal the permission from me. <laughs> I am like the vehicle of permission and I just pass on the permission and they're like sure I'm gonna go and do that and they go off and they make it happen right so that's typically what I spend most of my time doing is giving people permission Kate you've got a question uh my question is um I sound very selfish because it's something that's sort of stewing on my mind of late is do you think there's any such thing as a backward step because I've always felt like we're an accumulation of our experiences and we bring mm. exactly what you said um, lots of different experiences as well as um, cross-pollination to what, you know, where we're at. But I suppose in my mind, I'm having a bit of a crisis <laughs> in that I've gone from that acute space into yeah. aged care and disability. And now I've kind of got that imposter syndrome thing going on as well. So I'm just wondering oh, what wow. your thoughts yeah. are about that, um, you know, whether there is such a thing as a backward step or whether if we just keep moving forward and there's propulsion and we think about everything as an opportunity like what your take is on that I love this question I've demoted myself two times yeah <laughs> I've I demoted, demoted myself. myself a lot too <laughs> yeah I've demoted myself a few times and I think there's lots of heads nodding I think it's so important to acknowledge that um I'll get curious about why we believe that we're taking a quote-unquote step back right from a coaching perspective I'd be asking you questions about like What's coming up for you cognitively? What stories are we running? And here's the thing as nurses, like we've learned this to be true, right? Like that's what we're taught. We're almost taught this, like you've got to pursue the path and that you shouldn't take a backward step. But the one thing that I'll give you in the short time that we have is just make sure that you like your reason why you've decided what you're doing is, is right for you. As long as you like your reason why you move from acute care into this role or you demote yourself or you take a step back, that's all that matters. Don't know if everybody's noticed but no one really pays attention <laughs> no one really cares so you know we don't want to waste our precious cognitive space um disempowering ourselves or telling ourselves stories that don't serve us right and i think that that's maybe what might be going on there and trust me i've been there done that and i help a lot of people with this and the filter is do you like your reason why yes or no if it's a yes run with it if it's a no we've got some work to do to explore yeah that's was one no, thank you question in the chat Vicky I don't know if we've got time but Nike asked how did you deal with the guilt of cross-pollinating oh that's a really good question how did I deal with the guilt of cross-pollinating well I think it's how I reframed it in my mind because at the time at the start right I was saying it was a bad thing and everybody kept saying to me like unknowingly like maybe you should just stay put maybe you shouldn't do this maybe you shouldn't move but I just started seeing in that moment where I read that book and I'd done a lot of personal development and coaching um, I was like, hold on a minute, actually, this is my strength. I started collecting evidence to the contrary. Every job that I took, I realized that I actually had this depth and breadth of experience like we all do. Whether you've cross-pollinated across 15 jobs or not, you have cross-pollinating, you have transferable skills. So I just started reframing that and being like, hold on, actually, I do have all of these things and this is my superpower, for sure. And it's your superpower too. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you.